right, welcome everyone. I'd like to introduce Frank Notaft, who is the chief economist here at CoreLogic. Thank you for being here, Frank. Thanks for having me, Sean. So let's jump right in. What's going on with housing supply, Frank? Oh my gosh, housing supply, it's a record low. We've been keeping track of housing supply for the last 40 years. I've never seen it so, so limited as we see right now. It's a record low in terms of the inventory of homes on the market. Yeah, it's just crazy. And we also know there's a lot of people in forbearance right now. Is that going to affect if they start to come back to, into the marketplace trying to sell? What does that do to the market? Well, I think that'll actually help the market because we'll see a little bit more inventory come on to the market. Uh, so now many of the people who are in forbearance though, they're working with their servicers to go through a loan modification. So it may very well be, especially as the economy improves, the economy opens up, people get back to work. It may turn out that they'll be able to work through a loan modification and stay in their homes. There's no question though in my mind that some of them probably will have difficulty and we'll see those homes come on the market as distressed sales. Is it a risk that that produces a glut of inventory and, and changes the market dynamics significantly? No, I don't expect that at all. This is so different from the foreclosure crisis that we went through in 2008, 9, and 2010. Uh, it'll be nowhere near the same uh, level of activity. And that's partly because of the uh, forbearance programs that have it in place to give uh, families time to get their financial house in order. And the fact that we're looking at the strongest economic growth in 37 years this year in, in the United States. Wow. So let's jump a little bit forward, Frank, into new construction now. So we know there's been a lot of uh, demand out there. We know lumber prices are high, very high. What's that doing to the demand for new construction and uh, the effect on housing shortage? Well, you're absolutely right, Sean. Material costs are up substantially, especially for lumber. Lumber is, is the key ingredient, of course, for single family construction. And on the wholesale level, lumber prices have doubled over the last year. That may, that's going to make it extremely challenging for home builders to build supply for the, uh, the more affordable tier in the marketplace. I do think we're going to see an increase in single family construction and new home sales in 2021. It's just going to be very challenging to meet that needs in the affordable segment. Got it. So on the... Uh... Appraisers have to deal with really hot markets at times, things that are trending up really fast, Frank. I've heard that in some areas or na na nationwide, we might have more listing agents than we do listings right now. So it's an interesting time. So how do appraisers, how do we deal with characterizing the current market dynamics? And is it going to stick? Is, it, is this a trend for the next month, six months, a year? What do we see? I think appraisers are really well positioned because they have the skill set where they can actually really evaluate what's been happening in the marketplace, looking at the comp transactions, looking at some of the trends and costs in the marketplace as well, and really give a really good sense of what the true value is of a, of a particular subject property. So I think they're really well positioned in this market. You're, you're absolutely right, though. It has been very challenging because we've seen this double-digit home price growth uh, in our national price indices, and it varies so much uh, uh, geographically as well. Suburban markets tend to be really hot right now. Some of those inner-city urban core markets tend to have some weakness as well. So it's important to keep that in mind when, when thinking about um, market dynamics. Let's finish with this question, Frank. Renters, rental properties, you know, more on the small rental, you know, single family market. You know, what's going on there? And, you know, with the forbearance and folks not paying rent uh, for who knows when that, that'll come back to normal. Is that affecting the values of these properties? Is there there's still strong demand? What's going on there? That is such a great question. And I tell you, it is so interesting the effects the pandemic has had on demand for single family homes. Just like we've seen in terms of the home purchase market, it's also affected the tenant population. So those families who are tenants who are not ready to buy yet, many of them have been moving out of downtown locations from high rise uh, rental uh, uh, buildings and moving out to more suburban locations, moving into single family rental homes where they can have more 
um, living uh, space uh, in terms of square foot of living space for their um, uh, office from home, and where they can have even a little bit of a yard, a little bit of green space around the outside of their house, just to promote social distancing during the time of a pandemic. And that's what we, we've really seen. Single family detached rental homes, rents are, are up there. Those properties are in, in strong demand. We've observed about six and a half percent increase in rents on single family detached rentals over the last year. It's amazing times, Frank. It's been a very interesting year and I'm sure it'll continue. Thank you for this update. We appreciate your wisdom and your insight and uh, that's it. We'll talk to you all later. Yeah, good catching up, Sean. Thank you.